So I was designing this 3D print the other day and came across some really cool things that I think beginners would want to know. How can I build a part that's really intelligent and when I make a change, everything updates just how I want it to? Yeah, so like in this example, I've created it where if I were to make a change here to this first diameter, it will still fit on the plate and that this will size accordingly and so will this, that there's a relationship or an equation between the three different knobs, right? So if we make this three times bigger, everything updates accordingly. Right, it all still fits on the plate. I could still 3D print this and even the heights of the extrusions update accordingly and that there's enough clearance between the ends. So let's talk about how you design something like this. Starting a new part, I'm gonna do a sketch on the front plane and I'm gonna come in and start sketching and I'm gonna sketch the three circles. Now I wanna make it intelligent and a big part of using Fusion 360 intelligence is constraints. How do I make all of these things line up? So there's a few ways you can do that. You can select the three center points and just right click and do horizontal, or you can even use construction geometry. I like both methods where I come in and use a right click for construction right there or hit X on your keyboard. Um, you can sketch it that way or you can just do constraints. First thing we're gonna do is use smart dimension and we're going to place some value. This is the very first dimension, so it's called D1 and we're gonna keep it really simple. How can I set up an equation to make the second circle twice as big, the third circle three times bigger? So that's how what we're gonna show now. I'm gonna add a dimension and what I wanna do is just hit delete and relate this dimension to that. So all I do is click it and then type in any additional values we wanted calculated. So I want it to always be twice the value and then we'll put a dimension out here and I want it to be this value times three. So I do the asterisk three, hit okay. You'll notice that it gets an FX. That means that it's being driven by an equation. How do I make intelligent spacing between the three knobs? So what you want to do is you can do it with a dimension and I can make it related to this value or this value. I could say that it's this value multiplied by 0.9. So it's just a little bit smaller no matter what. And this, we could do just the line itself or we could say that this distance is always distance or diameter value. So I'll click the diameter value so it's just always gonna be equal. This distance is equal to that diameter. Awesome, okay, so next let's do the enclosing perimeter, that plate that it's gonna be extruded on. So I'm just gonna sketch a rectangle and I need to get the spacing right. And I want to place a dimension from the outer circle. By default, Fusion will wanna to go to the center so when I click it, you'll see it just goes right to the center or if I, even if I do to the circle, it wants to go to the center. So you can right click on the circle and make sure that it's going to the arc tangent and then it'll let you select that. And now we've got this cool spacing to the edge and I want this to always be related to that, to the D1. And we'll do kind of the same thing for this one. Right click, do arc tangent, same thing, D1, click the value. Looks great. How about this height? I always want it to be this value times 1.25. So always just a little bigger. And the next thing is how do we center this rectangle? Few ways you can do that. My favorite is still just connecting from the center point to the midpoint here with a construction line and that should hold it in place. But you gotta make sure you add the constraint, select the two, midpoint. Now it's locked in, looks great. We're gonna do two extrudes. I'm gonna do this plate going down or up. <laughs> so we'll say that it's, we could make an equation for that one. We'll show that in just a second, but I'm gonna turn on the visibility. Now, how do we make the depths intelligent? So we're gonna extrude all three at once, or we could do separate extrusions, but I want this depth to be intelligent. So what I wanna do is come over to the sketch and wake up some of these dimensions. So I'm gonna cancel real quick. What I'm gonna do is come to the sketch, right click, show dimension. And now it's woken up, we'll hit extrude, we're selecting to extrude these three cylinders. And here's the value that I want to relate to our D1. So go find D1, which is over here. I could type in D1, that would work. So I'm gonna do D1 
multiplied by a negative 1.25. It just happens to be negative is what's going up in this, in the way I set up this part, positive value would be going the other direction. So that looks good. I'll hit okay. And now let's test it by just changing the value Double click, make it 50, everything updates. It clears it, the extrusion depths update. This isn't very intelligent, this plate. So same thing, I might wanna come back and add an equation for that plate. Is there a way to see all these equations in like a table? Absolutely, so if you go to the modify, change parameters, this is where you can see all of your values. And we can come in, see so those D1s and multiplication and what it's giving you, what value. You can come in and manipulate and change these equations. And I know this is a little bit advanced, but um, I think this is a great tool for all beginners to learn. That's why I even cover it in my Fusion 360 Jumpstart that it's supposed to help beginners learn the important things about Fusion 360. I'm gonna put the YouTube community coupon down below in the description. So if you're looking for a course, go check it out. Hope this was helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video.